I always had a great uh, affinity with animals as a child and loved the natural world. But it was really when I married Rod and moved on to Bohara, we joined the local land care group very early. It was formed um, in the early 90s. You don't know that you're beginning a journey, you just join a land care group and then you come to realise this isn't just a farm, this is a little ecosystem that you have the privilege of, you know, having some control over. Land for Wildlife is a national program that recognises landholders who manage their farms for conservation as well as production. It's free, voluntary, legally non-binding, so it doesn't change the status of a property, and offers landholders great opportunities and assistance to protect areas of wildlife habitat and biodiversity on their land. My name is Laurie Gould, and today I'm visiting the property called Bohara to conduct a Land for Wildlife assessment. Jenny. Laurie. Hi. Good to meet you. you finally. <laughs> Hi. Oh, Rod. Yeah. Laurie, how are you? Oh, well. It's wonderful to be forced to think of the wildlife. We've spent so many years thinking about our domestic animals and suddenly you realise actually every animal, every insect is part of this this farm. The whole and system. Yeah, so it's so when I get the there I meet the landholder and get an idea of what their enterprise is and how they manage their property uh, and that way then it gives me an idea of what advice I can give them um, more specific to what they're doing. We're working at uh, planting multi-species uh, in, in this uh, current job and uh, it's proven that, uh, that um, stock do better if they've got a big variety of pasture to graze on. Laurie, I've got a map. Oh, we'll fantastic. take that, it'll show us around. Let's leave Rod to get that yes, machine right. sorted so we can get the <laughs> multi-species crop in. And, um, right. And then I'll have a look around the property, we'll go for a, a drive and look at all the habitat areas, um, look at um, connectivity across the property for vegetation, look at waterways, other habitat elements like rocky outcrops and logs on the ground and, and things that can promote wildlife conservation alongside a productive enterprise. The assessment will be based around um, the property as a whole but then it highlights the habitat areas. So. Okay. Yeah, no, Jenny and Rod have a lot of sheep, but the way in which they manage them promotes ground cover all, all throughout the year. And they've also fenced off areas of high value, such as remnant vegetation and some of their dams. Um, and they've put in tree lines to connect habitat across their property. So what that means by protecting the marginal parts of the landscape, they can then increase their production on the more um, arable parts of the landscape. Yeah, so this is a, like a really good spot to stop because if you look out there over the rest of the landscape, you can see the remnant vegetation connectivity, all the little patches and it comes right up here through all these paddock trees and then up to this area up here which is fenced and protected. So that's exactly the type of thing that we're looking for um, when we do an assessment. It certainly is of high quality. And then of course the native grasses in the paddock that are coming back after the rain. So. Yeah, when you get, you know, specialised expertise on your farm, you're taught to notice things that you mightn't have noticed. And they come onto the farm and they think, that's a good habitat there. I didn't know that. So you're exposed to a whole lot of knowledge. When you work together, you become part of a, a kind of team. And we're working for, to make our country healthier. Even the soil though, just by, look at that, I mean this is in virtually in the middle of a drought with a small amount of recent rain. Yeah. You know, the process, the soil processes are really healthy. Yeah. So when it rains, the, the soil just, it's just going soaks up the water. Because yeah, those yeah. roots are holding it. Yeah. It's beautiful. The clarity of that water is, is because there are never any stock around the edges yeah, I'm assuming, is yeah. that it? Well it could be, it's just got a good area that's filtered before it gets here. So it's a good grassed over area and as the water runs down it gets filtered. Okay. The system's functioning, you know, you've got the plants and the, the insects and the um, bacteria and everything that need, you need to be working properly.
Yeah. Even just that plant there has so many dragonflies on it. It's yeah. one stick. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. got a, a whole bunch of different dragonflies to yeah, see. Yeah. yeah. They're incredible. Well, I just really like being out um, talking to farmers. I've been doing it for well over 20 years. And so Land for Wildlife provides me the opportunity to go out and connect with people in the bush, out in the country, have a cup of tea. It's all based on goodwill, so it's, it's a positive experience whilst also assisting them to do something positive for their property as well. The enjoyment of living on the farm is, is the wildlife and the, and the, uh, uh, the country living. That enhances the country living if you've got native birds and animals about. And here's the sign. <laughs> Thank you. What the... a great, what a great. Uh... It is an optional sign, but if you want to put that on your gate, we're certainly happy for you too. Well, um, we'll put it on the gate proudly. The good I think. thing. About... I mean, there's no legal obligations. It's a voluntary agreement that we put a signature on to say, look, we're part of this. We we want to be part of the solution, and um, so I can see no downsides to it.